Hey everyone, Eric here. In today's video, we're going to learn about how the unit economics of e-commerce businesses should evolve over their life cycle. By the way, if you missed part one about SaaS or part two about marketplaces, make sure to check those out. I'll include links below. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to walk through unit economics, how they work, the different components that go into them, some specific dynamics that we see in the e-commerce industry, quickly cover what contribution margins are because there's a lot of people in e-commerce with questions about what is gross margin versus contribution margins. And then we're going to do a case study where we're going to look at benchmarks. So we're going to look at CAC, contribution margin, contribution margin to CAC ratio, LTV to CAC ratio for a business as it scales up. So you have your idea phase, your launch, early stage growth, and then late stage business. And I'm going to show you what all of these ratios and unit economics should look like in an optimal scenario where a business is in a strong position where it can turn a profit and keep growing. And then in a suboptimal scenario. So I'm going to show you what the benchmarks look like if a business is not performing well. And so by the end of this video, you'll have a very good sort of 360 degree understanding of unit economics for e-commerce. So first off, the goal of unit economics is always to have each incremental customer be more profitable than the last. So if each customer has slightly better economics than the prior customer, meaning you make more money on them, it means that if your business gets bigger, it's also going to get more profitable at the same time. Your margins are going to go up and up and up the more additional customers you acquire. But if your unit economics are deteriorating, your business at 10x the size might drive its profits to zero, it might drive its profits negative, so you don't want your unit economics to be getting worse over time. If they are, you need to fix something in your business. So the unit economics definition, and by the way, there are large, a lot of large direct-to-consumer e-commerce businesses that scaled way beyond where they should have, and they have really bad unit economics. Okay, so let's just talk quickly about what unit economics are. They are the revenue, costs, and profit you make from one customer over their lifetime relationship with your company. So first off, you have your CAC, which is your customer acquisition cost. It's the marketing investment that you make to acquire that customer for the very first time. Then you have your AOV. It's the average basket size, the average amount spent when a customer makes an order. Your contribution margin is how much profit the company makes from an average order after the direct per order costs. We're going to dive into contribution margin down below, but after making the product and then fulfilling it, does the company make any money? That's the contribution margin. The customer lifetime value relates to the lifetime of a customer. So your contribution margin has to do with one order and your customer lifetime value is how much profit do you make from the series of orders that a customer will make over their entire relationship with your, with your company. And so often that could be two, three, four, five orders and all of the profit the company is accumulating from that customer's purchases. Then you have your LTV to CAC ratio. And this tells you, okay, if you acquire a customer and it costs, let's say $100, and then that customer then makes five purchases uh, and you make $100 of gross profit on each purchase, well, then you've made $500 of gross profit, $100 of CAC to acquire the customer, so you paid back the $100 CAC, and then you made $400 more. So that would be an LTV to CAC ratio of five. So it relates the marketing investments your company is making to the profitability of each customer. So here are some dynamics that we see in the e-commerce industry that are very, very important. First thing is there is a huge focus on the first order for most businesses. A lot of e-commerce brands will see many, many customers only purchase one time. So you need to make sure that on that very first order, you have economics that make sense. Some businesses enable this sort of subscribe and save. We call that a subscription box model where customers can subscribe and pay on a subscription to receive the product, let's say monthly. That works for certain types of products and that can be an antidote to low lifetime orders. So the goal of most businesses is at the very least break even on the first order. Okay, so there's also another way that a business can have great unit economics. The first one is just have good margins, break even on the first order or better. 
But the other way is a business that has uh, very, very high lifetime orders where a customer maybe buys five, 10, 15 times. Those businesses can lose more money on the first order because they know they'll make it back on the tail end of a customer's lifetime. And then quickly, I just want to clear this up, gross margin versus contribution margin. There's some questions about what this is. So here's how I think about this. And by the way, I did an entire video on contribution margins for e-commerce. Um, you can watch it here in the link. I'll also include a link in the description below. So let's talk about this. So this is one customer order and the economics of the one order. So we're saying that net revenue is 175. That's your average order value. Then you have a bucket that I'm calling the product cost. So product cost is getting the product manufactured, import freight, duties, and taxes. That is getting the product to the fulfillment center, where then it's ready to be fulfilled when the customer makes the order. So we're saying that product cost is 27% of revenue. And so I like to call this your, your e-com gross margin. It's sort of at the product level, how much money do you make? If you sell this for 175, your costs are 47 and you make 128. Now here you have another bucket, your fulfillment costs. So your product costs will always be the same. Your fulfillment costs will vary depending on where you're shipping your product. So here you have um, all of the activities required to get the product from the distribution center to the customer. So obviously your pick and pack, your materials, third party logistics charges, and then of course, shipping is going to be the biggest thing. So your fulfillment costs will vary from order to order. And your contribution margin is after making the product and then fulfilling it to the customer, how much did they contribute in profit back to the company? So that's $83. And with these $83, you basically uh, need to be able to acquire the customer. So your CAC should be $83 or less. And that's what we're about to get into down below. Hey, everyone, one quick announcement. I just wanted to let you know that registration for my training program, Finance for Startups, is now open. If you don't already know, Finance for Startups is a training boot camp I designed to teach you everything I know about startups. It includes 20 hours of lectures, five hours of live case studies and open Q&A sessions, lifetime access to our community, personalized support for me, and more. If you're interested to learn about how you can secure your spot in the program, check out the link in the description below. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so now let's talk about an apparel brand. And so again, for very highly consumable products, you might not be able to be profitable on the first order because you can drive a bunch of uh, repeat purchases on the tail end. But for products that you purchase once, uh, a lot of apparel items, things like that, you need to try to become profitable on the very first order, ideally. Okay, so we're gonna say this is the e-commerce. So, Right now we're in the idea phase. And the idea is that we have a CAC that's $65, our uh, AOV, and this is just our vision. This isn't anything real yet because we have no customers. We're gonna get to the launch phase in a sec. So that long-term our customer acquisition cost is $65, our AOV is 165, and that our contribution margin is 60% of revenue. And so then we're also hoping that we are able to drive three lifetime orders per customer. So they'll contribute that $99 three times over our relationship with them, and that will effectively add up to a $297 customer lifetime value. So here's two ratios that are really important in e-commerce. First one is contribution margin to CAC. So that means we make 1.5 times our CAC in contribution margin. So if we spent 65 to acquire the customer, uh, and then we made $99, it means we would make our contribution margin after CAC as $34, or CM CAC ratio is 1.5. They tell you the same thing. So we're doing better than break even. And then long term, we hope that our LTV to CAC ratio is 297 divided by 65, so it's almost five. So that's what we're gonna try to do. So now we launch. So we have our initial launch, we've got some new customers that know the founder. So our CAC is really low because a lot of this is friends, friends of friends, and a lot of organic sales going on. So our AOV in the beginning is only $89 because we're running discounts, et cetera. And because of that, our contribution margin is only 39%, pretty low. Lifetime orders is just one in the beginning because customers haven't had a chance to buy more than one. So at 
at we start out in our contribution margin to CAC is actually break even. It's one or better. So these are basically optimal numbers. This is our scenario where this business, in my mind, is doing pretty well. Now we get to early stage. So we have some early marketing channel fit, which for us is Facebook ads and organic Instagram. So we're getting kind of a mix. And at this point, we were able to drive 2,500 orders and our CAC is $68. And then our AOV is 134 and our contribution margin at this point is 49%. So we're not discounting as much. We're getting some better efficiency in the business. And um, from our original 500 customers, when you look back to them and give them another chance to come back and buy, it turns out we've actually been able to drive the lifetime orders from the older cohorts of our customers to 1.7. So the customer lifetime value at this point is 112. So our contribution margin to CAC ratio is about one. We're kind of breaking even on that first order, which again, is actually not bad. And then our LTV to CAC ratio is 1.6. It's not great but it means that we're doing something right and the metrics are at least going in the right direction. Now we get to the growth phase. So this, in my mind, is having a strong marketing channel fit, meaning we're learning how to scale ads really well and we're scaling aggressively. So at this point, we are seeing our CAC drop a little bit as we start to see more organic sales along with our, our paid acquisition. AOV has normalized. We're not running as many discounts, so it's 148. Our contribution margin is 51% now, and then we're driving more and more uh, customer sort of recurring orders, repeat orders. So our LTV is 196. So now our contribution margin to CAC ratio is 1.4. LTV to CAC is approaching four. These are strong unit economics. That being said, some of the best businesses actually can sometimes see uh, three, four, five contribution margin to CAC ratios just on the first order. But if you're scaling and you have these economics, the business is, is in a good position. So now the business is getting to the late stage. So now we've got 250,000 orders coming in and our CAC is $48. So our blended CAC is dropping as more and more sales come in organically. Uh, our AOV is up to 162. So we've launched more and more products and we're offering uh, more deals for bundling. So we've been able to drive the average order value up. Contribution margin goes up to 65%. So let's say now we're doing much larger product runs. We've fixed our supply chain. So we're able to actually drive a lot more product out of, uh, sorry, profit out of each order. And then our customers are coming back. They're coming back as we do these product launches. And so the customer lifetime value is now 3.1 orders. So our contribution margin to CAC ratio is 2.1 and LTV to CAC ratio is 6.7. So in this scenario, we're always breaking even or better on the first order over the entire business life cycle. So these are the benchmarks that I'm saying you should target. So, you know, for your vision of your company, you should be targeting contribution margin to CAC ratio of better than one. And as you scale, if you can just keep it above one, then that's great on the acquisition side. And then the other side is the retention. So of course you need to have a whole marketing strategy around retention. Generally for a lot of businesses, that's uh, a lot of email marketing and a lot of organic. So um, these are, you know, a late stage business ideally is making money on the first order and then is driving many multiples of CAC five plus um, on their repeat customers. Okay, so this is a business just so you have kind of a flavor that has suboptimal numbers. So in the beginning, the idea phase, we have the exact same idea. So these numbers are identical. And in the launch phase, we also have the exact same numbers, meaning a lot of our friends and family bought the product in the beginning and it's sort of the same. But here's our, where we start getting into trouble. So we're in the early stage phase now and we see our CAC rise significantly. So here is rising to 68, now it's rising to 79. So our CAC is going up and we're having difficulty scaling. But we keep putting money into marketing. Our AOV actually stays uh, the same, uh, but our contribution margin goes down a little bit. Maybe we're not optimizing our supply chain. Maybe our distribution center is in the wrong place or um, you know, we, we, we've had to do some air freight, things like that. So our contribution margin is a little bit lower. In addition, 
those original 500 customers, when you look back at that cohort, they're not coming back and purchasing much. They're only purchased 1.2 orders over their entire lifetime. So in this scenario, we're at 1.7. So what this all translates into is a $66 customer lifetime value. And so our contribution margin to CAC ratio is less than one, and our LTV to CAC ratio is less than one. And so this business should not be scaling until it can fix its unit economics. Now we get into the next phase. So let's say this business raises a $20 million Series A, Series B, and just keeps scaling. And so now the CAC keeps going up. They keep putting more and more money into marketing rather than really figuring out why they're not uh, scaling efficiently. And their CAC goes to 123. Their AOV goes up. So the AOV is tracking perfectly, but the CAC is skyrocketing. Here you can see the contribution margins 48%, so they're making some improvements. But again, the lifetime orders are only 1.5, and here it was 2.6. So the contribution margin to CAC ratio is 0.58 on the first order, and on a lifetime basis, it's 0.87. So that's, that's bad. That means you're losing money on every single customer that you acquire. And in the late stage, we keep scaling. Let's say we keep raising money. Maybe it's a really hot market. Um, and CAC rises to 149. We're funding it with other people's money rather than funding it with a profitable business. AOV goes up to 162. Contribution margin here, uh, it goes up to 86, but still we didn't make the improvements to our supply chain. Um, and so it, it's going up, but not as much in, as in this other scenario. And then finally, our lifetime orders are only 1.8. So our contribution margin to CAC ratio is 0.6, and LTV to CAC ratio is one, but one is not a good LTV to CAC ratio because that means that, that that's going to leave you no money to cover the other costs in your business. So you need to be generating profit on each customer to pay for your OPEX. And so this is a scenario of, of two businesses. You know, Can you run a business with a contribution margin to CAC ratio of less than one on the first order? Yes, if you're a business that has a lot of repeat buyers. No, if you're a business that has a lot of one-time buyers. So I would be careful of that. Okay, so I hope this gives you a good idea of how unit economics should evolve over the life cycle of an e-commerce startup. I'll also include links in the description below to other videos in this series, which are about SaaS and marketplaces. Also, if you want me to teach you everything I know about finance for startups in a small group with personalized support from me, check out the link in the description below for a chance to join the next group of my training program, Finance for Startups. Also, if you found this content valuable, please like and subscribe. As always, in the description below, you can download this Excel model completely for free. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.